listen to me. I would tell him how good. I would go to him as a prince. Listen to what Job's saying. He's really puffing himself up. If God would just listen to me, I would tell him how good I am. And I'm righteous and I'm holy, so I would just walk boldly up right in his face and I would tell him. That's basically what he said. I'd go to him as a prince. Somebody with authority, somebody with power, somebody who deserves to be looked at and, and respected and an honor. And if he'd just listen to me, I'd tell him. That's what Job's doing. He's talking about God. That sounds pretty bad, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. He ain't doing anything we don't do. That's right. You may not say it as blatantly or as boldly or, or whatever. But when we go through things and we begin to say to God, I've lived a good life, God. Why are you doing this to me? If I would have been a, a druggie, well, then, yeah, this stuff should happen to me. If I'd have been a thief, this stuff should happen to me. If I'd have been, a, that's what Job did. He went through all that. God, if I'd have done this, if I'd have done that, then this stuff should happen to me. But here's my desire. You listen to me. And I'll tell you how good I am. And I'll do it boldly. That's what Job said. And that's what we do. To one degree or another, that's what we do. I'm going to jump over to chapter 38. And you can read everything in between here. You already go in there and really read this and think about how much this is like me. Mm -hmm. And we jump over to 38. All the way up through here, all this stuff's going on. We get to verse 30, chapter 38, verse 1. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee, and answer thou me. Where wast thou when I laid the foundation of the earth? Declare it, if thou hast understanding. Who hath laid the measure thou that thou knowest? Or who hath stretched the line upon it? Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? Or who laid the corner stone thereof? When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Or who shut up the sea with doors when it break forth as if it had issued out of the womb? And you can go on and read that whole chapter. And God is telling Job just exactly who he is. He's asking Job, where were you when I created the world? Where were you when I flung the stars into the sky? Where were you when I commanded the ocean that it can't come past this point? Where were you when I did all these things? Who are you to question me? That's what God, and God is showing him who God is. And I don't know if you've ever read Job, but I want to encourage you to read Job and really think about when you start reading from here on, chapter 38 on, you start thinking about the awesomeness of God, the power of God, the might, the majesty of God, all these things. And it just would take too long, or I'd read this whole chapter. But you read it. What he talks about, he has done. And the things he put in place and the things he prepared. And, and all those things. And he's asking Job, now who are you to question me? Who are you to tell me what's what? Who are you to tell me what I should do and what I shouldn't do? This is what God is doing. This is who God is. And again, I believe that from the bottom of my heart, we forgot who God is. We don't understand who God is. He's not just some figurehead for our religion. He, it, 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 we treat him like worse than a lot of the other religions treat their false gods. They give their false gods more honor than we give God. Uh, they, they attribute to their false gods more power and more righteousness and more holiness than we do to the God. We have forgotten who God is. We have come down through time and the church has made unto themselves other little gods. And you can go read in, in Romans 7, I believe it is, where Paul is talking about this. Making other gods. Making God what we want God to be. A God that suits our purposes. A God that is obedient to us. A God that does things the way we want things to be done. That's what we have done, and we have forgotten who God is. This is God. Well, and this is just 
scratching the tip of it of who God is. These things that he is telling Job. And he's asking Job, where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Where were you when I flung the stars into the sky? Where were you when I created the ocean and I told the ocean, you can't come past this line? Where were you when I did all these things? And, and it goes for a couple chapters of God telling Job, these are the things I did. These, this is who I am. This is what I am capable of. And who are you to question what I do or what I allow? And I think we need to ask that same question of ourselves. Who are we to question what God does or what God allows? I know sometimes things happen and, and they hurt. And sometimes things happen and, and they really cause a lot of emotional stress and things like that. And we wonder why in the world it happened. But we have no right to tell God this should not happen. Things shouldn't be like this. What kind of a God would do this? We don't have that right to do that. But we do that. And, and I think if we could just if we go back to the old prophet, is it Isaiah or Ezekiel? But anyway, he said, I saw the, the Lord high and lifted up, sitting upon his throne. And after he described a little bit of what he saw, when he saw God sitting upon his throne, then the next scripture says that he realized just what he wasn't, how vile he was, how despicable he was. If we would see God, really see God for who he is, we would realize what we are not. We ain't all that. We think we are. But we ain't. And this is what God is asking Job. Where were you? Who are you to question me? Who are you to come before me and say such things? And again, I encourage you. You read these next couple chapters. And when you read them, read them with this mindset of getting a glimpse of God. And truly trying to see who our God is. I think a lot of time we miss who God is. If we would read the Bible with a mindset and a heart set of getting an image of God, it would benefit us. You know what? how we read the Bible? <coughs> to see what's in there for me. That's what we do. We love the fact that salvation is a free gift. Don't we? We love the benefits of salvation. But we don't want nothing to do with the responsibility. Amen. Amen. Come on. We want the gift and we want the benefits. And that's it. And that's how we read the Bible. Where are my benefits? Where are my benefits? And that's how we read the Bible. What do I get? What's God going to do for me? What's Jesus going to do for me? How's this going to make my life better? How am I going to prosper? How am I going to increase? That's how we read the Bible. And let's just be real honest. That's what church has become. What we can get out of it. But it ain't about what we can get out of it. Right. It's about who he is and what he deserves. Amen. And he's not there. To, to answer your every little whim and be there at your beck and call and, and put a little boo boo, a uh, band aid on your boo boos. That's not what he's there for. He is God. And we forgot who God is. And I'm going to say this again and then I'm going to move on. Read the, those last few chapters of Job and look at who your God is. If we really get a picture of God, it ought to make us tremble. It ought to make us quake. It ought to put that fear of God back in us that the church has lost. Because we've forgotten who God is. This is the one, as he's telling Job, who spoke and things came into existence. Who holds the world in the palm of his hand. Who can command the seas who can command the animals, who can command uh, what we call nature, the storms and the winds and the snows and the rains, uh, the one who can uh, command the volcano and the earthquake and the tornado and the hurricane. That's who our God is. That's right. 
But we've forgotten that. Mm -hmm. okay, I'll keep going here. I wish, I pray someday God will give me the words uh, to just express who God is. I, I don't think a human being can do it. But I pray that, that somehow he'll give me something that, that will make people realize he's not what we have made him to be. That's right. Let's go to verse uh, chapter 40. Verse 1. Moreover, the Lord answered Job and said, Shall he that contendeth with the Almighty instruct him? He that reproveth God, let him answer. Shall he that contendeth with the Almighty instruct him? And that's exactly what we try to do. Listen, there are those who are preaching and teaching, and those are, there are those who believe in that if I say this, God has to do this. You don't instruct God. Right. You don't order God around. He, and again, he's not at your beck and call. He's, he's not your slave. Hey, he's not your fetch and carry boy. Uh, he is God. And Job just did what we as human beings do. That's what Job did. And this is how God answered him. And this is how God answered us. Listen to what he said. The Lord answered Job and said, Shall he that contendeth with the Almighty instruct him? What do you like to say? I don't contend with him. We do. When we do what Job did, we do. When we say to God, I shouldn't have to go through this because I'm good. You shouldn't have let this happen because I'm righteous. I, I'm a good church member and I'm a Christian and I'm this and I'm that. So this stuff shouldn't happen to me. It should happen to the wicked. We're contending with God. And then we do what Job did and instruct him. Now, God, you listen to me. Because I walked in my integrity, because I did this and took care of the poor and the widows and this and that, you are to hear me. That's instructing God. And that's exactly what Job did. And again, we do it. You can disagree with me if you want to, and you can sit there and think we don't. And, and I'm sure there's nobody here using the same verbiage and the same words that Job did, but we do the same stuff. And God said, Shall he that contendeth with the Almighty instruct him? He that reprove of God, let him answer it. Then Job answered the Lord and said, Finally, after God went through all these things, <coughs> describing himself to Job about the things he did and created and, and his power and majesty and might, Job said, Behold, I am vile. What shall I answer thee? I will lay my hand upon my mouth. Once have I spoken, but I will not answer. Yea, twice, but I will proceed no further. Then answered the Lord unto Job out of the whirlwind and said, Gird up thy loins now like a man. I will demand of thee and declare thou unto me. Wilt thou also disannul my judgment, and wilt thou condemn me, that thou mayest be righteous? And that's what we, Job is finally getting to a point where he realizes what he is and who he is. And then God is asking him this question. You question my judgment and say that it's, right, <coughs> it's not right uh, and these things shouldn't be happening. And when we do that, we condemn God. That's what we're doing. And we do that to make ourselves think we're somebody other than who we are. And then God goes on and Throughout chapter 41, uh, rest of 40, and, and chapter 41 again, he's starting to show Job who he is. And we get to chapter 42 and verse 1. Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything, and that no thought can be withholden from thee. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understood not things too wonderful for me, for me which I knew not. I'm going to stop there just a second. We don't know what we're talking about most of the time. And this is what Job said. I uttered things that I didn't even understand. And that's what we do. We don't understand. Things happen. Things are going to happen. You're going to have tribulation. God may use it to glorify himself. Whatever. We don't understand. We have to just trust God and believe God. Claim his promise that all things work together for good. Instead of going off and saying, why did these bad things happen to me when I'm so good? And that's exactly what Job did. And finally, Job got to the point where he understood that. He said, I uttered that I understood not. Things too wonderful me, which I knew not. Here I beseech thee, and I will speak. I will demand of thee, and declare unto me. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear. Listen to this. But now mine eye seeth thee. Up to this point, 
Job had only heard of God. He said, I have heard of you. That's us. We've heard of God. Most of us sitting here all our lives. We've heard of God. And we're worshiping that God we've heard of. Finally, Job saw God for who he was. It's time that we see God for who he is. When God began to go through and show Job who he is by all those things that, that he was saying. And, and again, please read all that and see who God is. Job finally got it. And he said, I heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now mine eye seeth thee. Wherefore? Because now I see who you are. Now I know who you really are. I finally see who you is. And he goes on and says, Wherefore I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. Now let me put this out there for you. Here's Job, a righteous and an upright man. The Bible says he was. None like him in all the land. Even God said right to the face of Satan, here's a righteous and an upright man. None like him in all the land. What did Job do wrong? All these things happened to him. And he did exactly what anybody would do, didn't he? Ask God, why is this happening to me? It's what anybody would do. Why do I got to go through this? Why is this happening to me? I'm a righteous man. I'm an upright man. I serve God. I worship God. I mean, Job went so far as to make sacrifices for his children in case they sinned. I mean, he was a righteous man. And all this stuff came on him. And after all this stuff came on him, he didn't do anything that anybody else wouldn't do. He asked God, why is this happening to me? Why should I have to go through this? Because I am a righteous man. I he started listening to God, all the righteous things he did. And they were truth. And then he asked God to take it away. And God did take it away. And he did exactly what we would do. God, don't you hear me? We do that. I've heard people in here say, I prayed and it seemed like he don't even hear me. It seems like he's so far away. Sick as I live with Job did nothing anybody else didn't do. And then God began to reveal himself to Job, to show Job who he is through all those things that he said. And then what was the result? Job said, now I see who you are. And I abhor myself. And I repent in sackcloth and dust and ashes, whatever he said there. Why did he repent? What did he do wrong? We don't need to repent. We don't do anything wrong. Mm -hmm. Job didn't do anything we don't do. Right. He didn't ask any questions we wouldn't ask. He didn't lay out before God anything we wouldn't lay out before God. And when he finally saw who God was, he had to repent. He began to abhor himself. I want to read this again. I want you to really hear this. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now mine eye seeth thee. Wherefore I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. When we see who God really is, it will cause us to repent. Because we have treated him like a statue on the shelf. We have treated him like a piggy bank. We have treated him like uh, a get out of hell free car. We have treated him like uh, the rescue dog that comes when you get lost in the mountains and find you. Or we've treated him like everything other than who he is. And until we really see who he is, we're not even going to understand that. We are so filled with our own righteousness. We are so filled with our own uh, concept of what is good and what is bad. We're so filled with all that. We think because we uh, got born again and because uh, we tell people about Jesus and because we go to church and because we pay the tithes and because we pray and because we're uh, good moral people, we think we are something. Job was all that and more. There was none other like him. 
The only person I can find in Scripture where God said that about him right to the face of Satan and told Satan, this one is so upright, this one is so righteous, this one loves me so much, you can do whatever you want to do to him and you can't turn it. Show me somebody else that God had that much confidence in. But yet he did. 